Welcome back. I'm Pat, that Halloween movie collector, and I'm back with another What If for Friday the 13th movie. And this week we're doing Friday the 13th Part 2. My favorite entry in the franchise. This is definitely my favorite. Love me uh, some Ginny. And it's just got some great kills. Some uh, cute girls. Some skinny dipping at night. So this is one of my, this is my favorite one. I do have a lot of uh, fondness for the first First four, pretty much. And five is a dark horse, which I really like. It's like a guilty pleasure film. But let's do our what ifs for Friday the 13th, part two. So part two opens up with Alice. She's in an apartment. She's trying to put her life back together. She's flashing back to have, she's having nightmares of the events of uh, the year before. And she goes to shower. She comes out and she, she, she hears something. It turns out to be a cat, but... Eventually, we find out that Jason's tracked her down to avenge his mom's death because she did behead him. And he kills her with an ice pick to the head. Now, I didn't see why they felt the necessity to kill her, all, kill the final girl off in the first 10 minutes of this film. She could have just as easily come back. So my first what if is, what if Jason didn't kill Alice? I mean, you could have still had the whole storyline with Ginny and Paul and the rest of the gang at the Pakenak Lodge. It wouldn't have been so bad. And it could have had something cool where maybe, you know, she's trying to put her life together and then she shows up towards the end of the movie, much like Mrs. Voorhees did. Maybe she's thinking something's going to happen and she wants to go there because she knows there's a whole group of people there that are reopening the camp. So maybe she shows up and then then there's a duel there. That would have been a little bit better than her just getting a nice pick to the head. You know, it was kind of... To me, that was like a like an unceremonious kill-off much in the vein of how they killed Ellie Cornell off in part five. Like, seriously, that's all the shit they went through in the f previous film, and that's how you just killed them off? My right, number two. So you have two adventurous people, Sandra and Jeff, who are always hugging and feeling, and you know they have, they're having sex later on, and uh, just a, uh, it was like a fun couple to hang out with. And, of course, they're very nosy, and Sandra wants to go see where Camp Crystal Lake is, Camp Blood. So they wander off. And, of course, what happens, they get caught They get caught by the patrolman. Then he goes back and gives Paul a rash of shit. And uh, eventually they get to have, stay home and babysit the, the Pakenag Lodge whenever he gets to go out to uh, the casino bar and hang out. So my second what if is, what if Sandra and Jeff found Jason Shack? right? Didn't necessarily have to encounter him. But what if they would have found Jason Shack? And they wouldn't have thought much of it. It could have just been a hobo. It could have just been somebody living in the woods. I don't know if they would have equated it to Jason. But what if they found it? And maybe um, the policeman found, just like the policeman saw Jason run, and then he chases him and gets killed. They could have uh, encountered each other there. Would have been pretty cool. You know, instead of just them getting in trouble or whatever. But I just thought that would have been fun if they really, really delved into and got to Camp Crystal Lake, looked around and went even further and found Jason's uh, shack. All right, number three. So they just basically killed up. Crazy Ralph would have been cool if he had made it to a, a few more of these movies. And they killed him off in part two. So my number three is what if the policeman came, not like he, not like he was coming to, uh, like when he caught Sandra and Jeff. Number three is what if the policeman came looking for Crazy Ralph again? Because they he, Crazy Ralph knew that they were there and he shows up. And uh, what if he came looking for him again and maybe maybe he encountered Crazy Ralph and arrested Crazy Ralph for being there instead of just getting killed off? Because it would have been cool. I mean, it was a cool kill where he gets, you know, strangled with the um, barbed wire. But Crazy Ralph could have went on and been a little bit. He could have ended up in a few more of the films as the prophet of doom. My number four. This is simply because Terry is hot and um, Scott can't stop hitting on her the whole time. And, of course, he follows her. She goes skinny dipping. He, he hides her clothes when she gets out. And we get some nice some f nice full frontal because she was smoking hot. So, number four is what if Scott and Terry hooked up, right? What if he showed up while she was skinny dipping? They started making out, hanging out in a little beach area there, and uh, made a go of it. And they, they could have been killed on the beach, uh, much like um, Sandra and Jeff are going to get killed, fooling around. Maybe they could have been killed on the beach, fooling around. That would have been kind of cool. My number five. So they go out to the casino later on, and Ted is hanging out, getting shit-faced. He's stacking up all the bottles of beer, and he's hitting on the bartender. And, of course, we know that 
both Ted and the few other stragglers that stayed behind at the bar obviously survived. They never they never went back and got killed. So what's to say Ted, uh, my number five says, what if Ted hooked up with the bartender, right? Maybe she took his advances. He brought her back to the camp. And maybe she could have been a victim too, right? Poor Ted. Let him get a little. Why not? He's weird. He's drunk. Why not? Maybe she would have put out for him and could have came back to the camp and she could have been, they both could have been victims instead of uh, Ted surviving. One of the most iconic kills pertains to my what if for number six. So you have Vicky and Mark hanging out, fooling around in the, um, at the lodge because they stayed behind. He didn't want to go to the bar and she goes and freshens herself up because they're going to fool around and everything. And then, of course, you see that iconic kill where he gets the machete across the face from behind. It goes down all those long steps. So my number six is what if Vicky and Mark hooked up and they were fooling around and then Jason came and killed him and they both went down. Right. Like she could have been on top of them, hugging, kissing, riding them, whatever you want to do. And they both went sailing down that long uh, set of stairs. That would have been pretty interesting. Now, my number seven could have ch- changed the trajectory of the f- all the films after this. Because in the first film, you know, we see Ari Lehman as Jason. He's, he's like a mongoloid looking and there's no masks, no nothing. Part two, now we see him. He's got, he's got the sack. Well, they call him Sackhead Jason. He's, he's got the sack over his head with one eye, which is creepy as hell. Very reminiscent of the Town of Dreaded Sundown. And um, But what if, number seven, what if Jason wore... Ted's mask. Now you remember when Paul's telling them that whole story about Jason, they're all sitting around the fire and to scare them, he comes out in that outfit. He's got the, he's got like the weird, like Kabuki mask and he's got the big spear, which is going to later, which is going to be used later to kill some people. What if he took that mask and put it on? Right? Maybe that would have been his mask. Maybe you wouldn't have had the iconic um, hockey mask down the road. That could have been his look, Right? Or he could have just used it for a couple of movies and if it gets destroyed and, you know, he could have picked up the, the hockey mask. But why not? The mask was right there. He could have put it on. My number eight. So now after um, they go, they, they escape uh, Jason Shack, uh, Jenny and Paul, and they go back to the lodge and then they hear something. And of course, it turns out to be Muffin at the door and it's OK. Then, of course, true to form, every Friday 13 has to end with it with that last minute shock. And Jason comes flying through the window at her. But that was it. So what if we saw after Jason went through the window? Because we don't know what the hell happened. Right? All of a sudden, boom. He jumps through. They did a slow motion so you can see how messed up his face is. Next thing you know, she's on a gurney getting into an ambulance. Well, what the hell happened? Where is he? Why is she still alive? Right? And my number nine would have plays right into that the same ending. What if we saw what happened to Paul? What the hell happened to Paul? She's on the gurney, ready, and she's like, Paul, where's Paul? Where's Paul? Well, where the fuck is Paul? Did he get killed? Did he survive? Did he get away? Did Jason drag him off to his shack? Because it's very ambiguous because you don't know what happened to Paul, and you don't understand why if Jason jumped through that window, we didn't see anything else that happened. Why is she still alive? We didn't get to see that last final confrontation to figure out what the hell happened. And my number 10, biggest what if. What if Jason killed Ginny, right? Because she he does jump through the window, and we don't know what happens. I mean, I would have thought he would have killed her. Why would he let her live? But what's the purpose of letting her live, right? Or even that could have been the scene where Agent King comes in, like right when he jumps through the window and, and he's killing uh, Ginny and Paul, and then maybe you could have seen Alice come in there. That could have been her entrance back into it. With so many different scenarios, but my biggest thing about I love this movie. Don't get me wrong. This, like I said, it's my favorite in the franchise. But the very ambiguous stuff at the end that they really don't detail. Now, I think there's a novelization. I could be wrong of this, so I wonder if there's a little bit more in that. I have to do some um, investigative work. We do a Halloween novel book club on this channel, and I think when we do those, I want to probably move into some more of the other horror books, maybe from Friday the Thirteenth and uh, Nightmare on Elm Street. And just a bunch of other stuff. Uh, there's so many horror books we could start doing. But yeah, it's a very ambiguous ending. And that's because there's a lot of what ifs. For the last 10 minutes, a lot of what ifs, right? 
But those are my 10 what-ifs for Friday the 13th Part 2. My favorite in the franchise? And let me know. I said it in the last one. In the comments below, hit me some, throw some of your what-ifs in there. Also, if you want to throw a ranking in there, let me know uh, what you're ranking. Always interesting to read people's rankings. And next week, time permitting, I'll be back with a what-if for Friday the 13th Part 3. Right? Another one of my favorite ones. Like I said, I'm very partial to the first five. So the first four are the top of the heap for me. Five, guilty pleasure. And then the rest of them, you know, part six is really high up there too. And the rest of them land in different places. Go check out my ranking. But do me a favor. If you like this, you like other videos, hit that like button. Helps people find this channel. If you're a Friday the 13th fan, a Halloween fan, a horror fan in general, there's tons of shit here. We do a horror podcast every Sunday. And we do horror movie watch-alongs every Tuesday. So make sure you subscribe to the channel. Helps your brother out. Don't cost nothing. Trying to grow the channel. Getting some more content out here. Anybody have any ideas? Hit me below and uh, just throw some stuff down there. But hope you enjoyed this What If for Part 2. And I will be back with Friday the 13th Part 3 What If in a week probably. So until then, I'll talk to you soon.